don't need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. The first question is coming from Monica, and Monica is writing all the way from Canada. She writes, hi, Betsy. Thank you for all that you do. My husband and I love your podcast and your clear, affordable approach to design. Our style words are peaceful, contemporary, and sophisticated, of course. Our colors are white, wall color, Benjamin Moore's Chantilly Lace, mid-tone wood, honey beige, oak floor, and blue, which is a sofa cover. I know that that is against your rules, but we eat on the sofa. I'm using silver metals and some greenia in Draxenia plants. We learned about them from your books. What do you recommend as a window treatment for a 60s house with a vaulted ceiling and wall-to-wall windows in an L-shaped living dining area? I loathe the beige drapes that came with the house, and we would love white Venetian blinds. As you have suggested in your book, I read them all, but I can't afford them because they are over $2,500 plus tax. Would Ikea roller blinds do or vertical blinds from Beauclair? I know they're on your rest list and not best list. We tried out Ikea's white curtains with the grommets last year, but they looked too billowy and took up too much space. This is a small, awkward living dining space because of the L shape. I have to limit the budget to $500 Canadian. I have scoured many thrift stores to no avail. These hideous curtains have been driving me bonkers for four years. Please help your fan, Monica. Monica, you did such a good job of describing your style. It's obvious that you've been reading my books. One feeling word, one style word, and of course, sophisticated. Before I can give you advice on your window treatment, I do need to call something out. You mentioned that your colors are white, mid-tone wood, and blue. Now, white is not a color. White in color theory is actually the absence of color. And mid-tone wood is not a color. It is the type of wood you've chosen. So you have selected your family of wood tones, which I'm very excited about. But the only color that you've listed that is truly making a color palette is blue. Because remember, your color palette needs three Roy G. Biv colors. You're asking, Betsy, what's Roy G. Biv? That is the abbreviation for the colors found in the rainbow, right? So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So you need to pick three of those colors as your color palette. Do not cop out with white. Uh, Mid-tone wood is not a color. It is your wood family. So that's one. Oh, excuse me. Guys, I'm going to be podcasting until September. And you're going to hear me burp. You're going to hear me swallow. You're going to hear me take a drink. These are things I hope you don't normally hear. But these are things I cannot control any longer because I have such bad acid reflux and indigestion that you're just going to have to bear with me because my poor editor would be cutting every three seconds if she had to take all of this out. So please bear with me. Please understand that this is just a part of my temporary journey and, uh, and I will be not this way again coming in the fall. (laughs) Okay, so now that I have corrected you a bit, Monica, I am ready to answer your question. So yes, you do have this wonderful mid-century modern home, and you have this really long wall of windows. And on the wall of windows, you've got these bulky beige drapes that are ill-fitting, because they're puddling on the floor probably about three inches. And as longtime listeners know, we only want a one-inch puddle, but ideally we want those drapes to just skim the floor. And the other thing that's problematic for me is that these drapes are individually um, 
drawn so that it's a series of panels. It looks like eight different panels. And the reason why you can't sew them all together is because you need these centralized stability brackets. You have one, two, three stability brackets inside the mount of the larger rod with the two brackets on each end. That's five brackets total. And of course, the drapery can't go past those brackets, so it's bound. Now, anything that you choose to do here, whether it's the IKEA panels or something else, I'm going to tell you is going to look bad as well. This window really, because of its extreme length, uh, because of its extreme width, not only do they go floor to ceiling, but they also go side to side, really needs a customized treatment. If you own this space, if you plan on being here more than seven years, it would be worth the investment to keep these hideous beige blinds for right now and save up and do something that's really meant for this window. I would hire a custom company. I would think about doing something automated so that way... Um, you know, you don't have to constantly pull these back and forth if it is something you're drawing every day because that's just a lot of physical labor. And I think there's also going to be much sleeker solutions, but the problem you're going to face if you repeat any sort of drape or even with those panels is you are going to need that center stability bracket situation, which is going to cause you to have drapery or panels breaking up this beautiful, expansive view. And to me, that's the big offensive issue here, is that this panoramic view is broken up because of the brackets, which is why if you do something custom, say it's on a track or something like this, it doesn't have to ever stop in the middle. It can go all the way side to side and you get that beautiful, full, uninterrupted view. So I know, Monica, that that's not the answer that you want. You're probably just as chagrined as when I told you earlier, you need two more colors to make a color palette. But I'm not in the business of giving you just band-aids because I want the next thing that you do to be the right thing. And unfortunately, when you do have such a fabulous space with such a particular type of view, you need to treat it with reverence. You need to treat it in a way that's as special as the windows are. So a lot of people move into spaces and, um, you know, they picked the space for these unique windows or for this unique architecture. But then they don't want to have to pony up and actually deal with what that means. And in this case, Monica, I want you to pony up. So save up so that you can afford to get a custom company out here and see what your options are. And it's going to make a world of difference. All right, there we go. You know, I want to throw one other thing out here that might be controversial. Say you want something in the meantime. Say you really don't want to wait. The other thing that you could explore that would be temporary, super affordable, and give you a really clean look is something that we do a lot in the city when we have windows that kind of face another building. Say you're on the 34th floor and it's really hard to treat this window, but um, you're facing another neighbor or it's hard to get that privacy is you could do the privacy film. So when you're inside the house, you can completely see through. But when you're outside the house, it has kind of a mirrored or reflective quality and you cannot see in. Now, that's not going to be a gorgeous, sophisticated, long-term solution. But the thing I like about that is that it gives you time to save up for that proper window treatment it allows you to have privacy without having these bulky, chunky, beige atrocities. And um, it's very affordable. So you can just peel off this film when you have the appropriate window treatment. I think that could be a really good way to go. And it's something for you to consider that certainly fits within your budget. In fact, it's well below. 
A big thank you to Aton and the Embassy who wrote our theme song. A shout out to Catherine Heller who owns the podcast shop and is our editor extraordinaire. We also want to thank Jenny Sunnison and her team at the Savvy Podcast Agency for their help with our social, our YouTube channel, and so much more. We also want to thank Uploft, which is our parent company who supports this podcast. And lastly, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all your support.